Welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. I'm your host, Snoogs, and joining me on deck tonight are my men in waiting, Greggio and Lucas, as we go through the top news and gaming stories from the week. So sit back, relax, and get ready for episode 325. Oh, this is the Aussie Gamers Experience Podcast, the show with irreverent live listeners, raging hosts, and eventually conversation about the best and the worst of the video games industry. So all that you're required to do now is to pick up your poison of choice, expect the best, but prepare for the worst, and above all, enjoy the show. Thanks everyone for joining in. Before we get started, Greggio, how are you, mate? Um, well, I'm I'm disturbed because I'm watching a video of myself again, thanks to Raithi. And um, on top of that, you call me your man in waiting. Not <laughs> sure what what that means. Like I know what a lady in waiting is, so you know if I'm a man in waiting, uh, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> um, Luke. Luke's here as well, and he's googling. I'm good. Yeah, I'm googling. What is it? It's it's actually a gentleman in waiting, uh, and it says uh, a man who comes from a family of high social standing and who is attached to a royal household or to the household of a person of high rank. When a gentleman in waiting brought a glass of water, the prince looked at her again before raising it to his lips. Well then. <laughs> This just got a little bit too Jane Austen for me. See ya. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Well, there you go. That's what oh, that means. Gee. Thank you. Uh, and hey, Luke, how are you traveling, mate? I'm doing good, thank you. I missed out on last week, so I'm I'm ready and uh, raring to make up for that with uh, some uh, offensive comments and just being rude. Well, we look forward to it. Uh, quick shout out to the chat every week. Uh, Thank you guys once again for jumping in. We've got A10, Radicus, and The Wraith. Some uh, familiar names there as always. Thank you, boys. Hope we can uh, have another fun one this evening. Uh, so let's jump into the show. This yeah. week, we've got 20 Years of Spoons, Cold War Heats Up, Nintendo World, Fallout 76 is still trying, The Heist of the Century, PS Plus, Games with Gold, and we're going to talk about a few other games as well. So let's uh, kick it off with This Week in Gaming. I had to do this one. This one's been all over the web today. 20 years ago today, the PS2 was released in Australia. Highest selling console of all time with 155 million units. Uh, obviously not in Australia, but everywhere. Uh, 20 years ago. You know, that one, whole one flies. PS2 is the best selling console of all time. Mm-hmm. I feel like that it's... It, it was it was a just the right time at the right place because I I really do th- look, I think the PS2 was a fantastic console but I think that the majority of sales went to people going I'm not paying a thousand bucks for a, a DVD, DVD player. player I'm going to buy yep. a PS2 uh, yeah. and that and that was at the height of uh, of DVD and um, that was. Uh, the right move for Sony to uh, throw a DVD player into their um, PS2, and I think that's yeah. what smashed it out of the park. I well, don't actually I think s- it's the best console that has ever been released. I can still remember, you know, stores were selling the PS2 as part of a package with a TV as a yeah. DVD player. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's a DVD player. That, oh, yeah, you can also play games on it. Yeah, your kids will love it. You can what use yeah. it to watch movies, and you don't have to pay a thousand dollars. Because I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that uh, DVD players came out at near on a grand uh, when yeah, they were first stupid. out. It was really expensive. But then the, the the PS2 came around, and look, I don't I don't really remember exactly how much they were, but they weren't a thousand dollars. They were probably no, I half think they were still yeah, I think they were five six hundred. But um, yeah. Oh, well, Radicus, oh, you go. Radicus same, just put in the chat. Seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Uh, that seemed was it? It wasn't that much. Was no. it? No. Here, quick Google. Uh, how much was the PS two when it first came out 
in Australia. Well, while, you, while you're going with that, uh, back then for the release, Australia was actually one of the last countries to get it. So, of course, it was released on the, uh, what, what today is, what, the 30th of um, November. It was released on the 4th of March in Japan. It was released on October 26th in the US and the 24th of November in Europe. Well, I've got a little bit of uh, conflicting information here from Google. And the first one says here, uh, Sony Computer Entertainment has announced PlayStation 2 will launch in Australia on November 30 and will carry a recommended retail price of $749. But then I also have here, however, the PS4 launched at the end of November 2000 and... Oh, hang on, that's the PS4. Why is that coming up in fucking PS2 Google stuff? Okay, I'm thinking uh, Radicus Radicus has got it. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, God, we're not not going to be the end of this. Uh, Quick, (laughs) let's move on, change the subject. PlayStation 2 was (laughs) awesome. What's next? (laughs) What's next? On to the show. Let's talk about some games that we've been been, talking playing this week it's mainly up to you two because i've done nothing new uh let's kick it off with some death stranding on pc look yeah so i picked up uh, death stranding on the pc because it's on sale at the moment I, I wanted to play this on pc for a very long time but i didn't really want to pay 100 bucks because it's was near on a year old but uh it, it came down to about 40 bucks and uh, i picked it up and it's absolutely magical on PC. But I remember it was bloody amazing on the PS4. So it transfers across and uh, plays at, uh, I don't know, about 140 FPS at 1440p on my PC. And it looks so good. It is such a beautiful game. Uh, once again, I think I said it ex- the exact same thing when I played it originally on the PS4, is that it really is a weird game that's very hard to uh, recommend because it you really are just a Uber Eats dude, but on foot and sometimes on motorbike and sometimes in a truck. Uh, mm-hmm. You just deliver shit to different locations, but the, the, the puzzly aspect, the actual gameplay part, is how to make it from A to B because it's not easy. You know, sometimes you've got to place, uh, strategically place ladders, you've got to use ropes, uh, sometimes you can use bits and pieces that are left there by other people that have played the game, because it has that online aspect. Uh, you've got some, you, you could either go over a mountain, which can take a long time, or you can go around, but if you go around, you're probably going to run into BTs, which are the ghosty things, which they, they, they can kill you. Um, so... It's, it's a really hard game to recommend, but for some reason, it clicks with me, and I really enjoy it, and playing it on PC, it's a, it, it, it's a very simple game, so it's going to run very well on a lot of PCs, because the vast majority of the game, it is just you in a big open land, walking mm-hmm. or running, and trying not to fall over, because you've got about 50 packages stacked up on your back, so... There's not a lot of uh, things for the for your computer to to actually process, but it uh, yeah it it is as amazing as I thought it would be, and I've really been enjoying it. Awesome! The amount of times I've gone back to that on the PS4, just to sort of you know switch off and just go for a walk, I suppose. Well, yeah, <laughs> and and the sound the soundtrack makes it awesome too for chilling. And it, and it's a game that the platinum for it's easy enough to get, but it's going to take a lot of hours to get it so it's um yeah it's just been sort of chugging away in the background and you know what? Fun with it. the the terrain in that game it reminds me of a ki- when i was a kid my parents had property in a place called mudgy uh and i would often go for walks and the terrain in death stranding is very similar to what it was like in mudgy because uh, mm-hmm. it was very hilly, very rocky. There were streams and creeks and dams. And it, that's probably another thing that makes me really sort of sink into it is because the uh, the location, is uh, it feels familiar. And uh, I don't know, that's, that's a, just a cool thing. And it, it looks, it's so realistic. I actually would say that it's one of the best looking games for the actual terrain that I've ever played. Mm. Amazing. No, it's definitely up there. Yeah. And of course, yeah, you find all those BDs out at Mudgy, but they're usually just drunks. 
No, we don't really see much out at Mudgee. There's nothing out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more now, mate. There's a lot more now. Oh, yeah, no doubt. A little while ago. <laughs> the one um, help with that. <laughs> All right, Gredge, over to you, mate. Uh, squadrons. Yeah. The game I keep getting told I need to go and buy. Well, look, quite frankly, best Star Wars game this year. Cool. I'm just going to say that. Um, it wasn't it, a very high bar to begin with. but was it, was um, it the only one? No, yeah. <laughs> well, when did, when did the, that stupid one I started playing last week? Oh, Jedi. Fall yeah. in order. That was last year. That was, was that last year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, November, November. I've lost track. Um, either way, um, no, it's... So I, I, got, I got a free trial. Um, you can download it if you... I don't know. It's If you've got EA Play, I think you can download it. Uh, Pretty ten decent hours, trial, too. 10 hours yeah, of ten hours. gameplay, yeah. Yeah, so it allows you to play, uh, like, the first mission, which is split between the two factions. You play both sides for the first mission. Um so you, essentially you're playing one half as one and then it takes over the story where you, you sort of, the stories intersect, the characters intersect and then you play as the other half. And then after that, you decide which path you want to take. Uh, however, that's where your trial stops and then it just gives you, and that's probably maybe 40 minutes, if that, lucky if that if it's 40 minutes of play. The rest mm-hmm. is then time to just thrash out on multiplayer. I really, I really, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I like the story. I, I, I think what I've played of it, it's an interesting setup. The controls are a little bit tricky to get the, to get the hang of because you're in space. There's a few little axes that you can't usually use in a dog fighting situation, like Ace Combat, like uh, sideways sliding. Obviously, like so, strafing is obviously a thing you can do with a spaceship that you can't do with a, uh, um, a fighter what plane. Yep. Not not that I've ever seen a starfighter in Star Wars strafe. Uh, they t- kind of act like airplanes in the movie, but in I've this, seen they real can fighter jets drift. Yes, drift, drift. Yep, you can drift them, but not strafe them. Their wings don't work that way. We well, can if Stop you're in them. a uh, Harrier sky. Yes, Harry's, you can. But Harriers do strafing. They they strafe, but they're they're not using the wings to stay up at that point. No. Uh, anyway, they're probably the closest thing you'll get to a starfighter in that instance. Anyway, um, so the, the the controls are a little bit. I found them a little bit tricky to get the hang of, but towards the end, it's more the the throttle. I found myself getting to the point where when I was in very focused in trying to attack you've got to really modulate your throttle to get the handling of the 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 craft so you've got to really floor it to be able to move anywhere in any great direction like any time you know what's the word i'm looking for in a decent amount of time to be able to have an impact but at the same time you have to throttle off to be able to get those high tight turn ig tight turn kind of things and i found myself a lot of the time in the middle of combat almost at a dead stop because i've throttled down too much and it's yeah i found i found that a little bit tricky and i i died a lot because of it um so with a little bit more uh i think i think it'd be something you could you could get the hang of uh but it's still a lot of fun um i i found i tended to play the empire a lot i like their the way this the the ties feel over the all the other wings from the the rebels uh, but why, yeah, it's, why do it's still great. You, all the ships in Star Wars have wings? Don't know. Because they're in space. Yeah, I mean, I guess the A-wing. Does, is it? Yeah, the A-wing doesn't have much of a wing. You know, it's, the, it's very much a delta sort of shape. But what are they called? The um, X-wings. Wings. X-wings. X-wings. You know how they open up the wings? Yep. Mm-hmm. Are, are the wings there just for the weapons? Like, because they, guess. they, there's no, well, no, well, the only time they ever, they get you know, into attack mode is when they open up the rest of the time when they're just flying normally, it's, uh, they're shut. Yeah. And they, they can, well, everything flies in space and not in space as well. Yeah. And really the, the so. Y wings don't have wings. They've just got like big rockets on the back of them. Yeah. And have you it's noticed that every up. single planet in Star Wars universe has the exact same gravity totally. and, the, and the air is breathable by everybody? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is a fantastic galaxy. Where is it, other than far, far, far away? away. <laughs> far, far away. Because <laughs> we need to find this joint and litter all of those planets. Litter. Totally. 
That's what terraforming does for you. Just, <laughs> just make the air breathable. Of course. All planets inhabitable. Even the most uninhabitable planets like Hoth and Mustafa, they're still like places where you could still just hang. But yeah, the 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 the, the set the the sets the 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 areas that you play in are interesting. Um, you tend, there's some nice wide open ones where it's just a big massive area. You've got plenty of line of sight to shoot from all over the place, and then you've got some really dense sort of uh, covered areas like asteroid fields or you know like space battle graveyard kind of things where there's bits of ship everywhere. There's a couple of different modes you can play uh there's there's kind of the just the the dog fight which is your straight up sort of team deathmatch kind of thing uh and then there's like the what's um battlefields big set piece multiplayer bit where they like the war shooty, you shooty, bang, bang. no you know where you've got the you've got the objectives and as you progress you're pushing your your team back or your team yeah, being yep. pushed back no, and they've, about, yeah. they've got that that same sort of thing where you both have a a, a, a car- your your flagship so for the imperials it's obviously a star destroyer um and the, Re- the rebels have got one of their big you know frigate things and then you have two uh smaller but obviously quite large ships that are playing the sort of defensive role and then you have the middle ground which is the the dog fighting area and as you it's sort of a point based system and once you get a certain it's like a tug of war point based system once you get a certain amount of points over the other team it pushes you into that zone so you go from dog fighting to attacking the two support cru- cruisers and then push to um, attacking the main flagship and that can go back and forth quite a bit. I, I found it wasn't necessarily as one-sided as, say, those those big set pieces in Battlefront. Usually when you turn the tide, it's kind of almost all over. You're just sort of, you're stemming the flow kind of thing. Wow. Right. <sighs> so, yeah, Squadrons, go play it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I want to play it, but I'm holding off on it until I get VR, until I get my quest. Yes. Uh, mm. A10 was actually saying he's, he wasn't getting his quest to work with it properly. Mm, I know, but that's A10. I'll work it out. You'll get it done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cold War. Luke, you can you can talk about this. I've been playing some more. I, I played some... Uh, I snuck in a game this morning. Shh. Why, why are we shushing? Were you not allowed to do that? Well, it's before work, I suppose. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine, <laughs> man. You don't have to get ready for school or anything. That's right. Uh, well, look, you know, we've been playing the, the multiplayer. I played a bit of that last night. But today, I actually started the campaign. And uh, I noticed something that they're doing differently in this year's campaign, which is, I think, pretty good. I mean, I haven't really fleshed it out just yet, but it's very different. Uh, how, have you guys played the campaign no, not yet. No? Well, there there are... Uh, Greg, I, I don't think you have the game, do you? No. No. Well, there are side missions that popped up. So it, it's got like a uh, a whiteboard. Uh, good. Atan says he's finished it in the chat, so he might be able to clarify some things that uh, I say here. But there's like a whiteboard, which will then sort of... And it's got like intel on it, but that's what like you select your missions from. But then... After the first one, maybe two missions, side missions popped up on there. But from what I understand, they're not side missions that you just go, oh, side mission, let's do that first. Because that side mission has a particular task that you have to do. So you've got to go in and you have to nominate before you go in who your targets are. But the thing is, you don't know. You don't know who the target is. You can select somebody from a list, go in and and kill them or capture (coughs) them or whatever. But they might be the wrong person. So what you actually have to do is play through the campaign and find intel. You know, in the previous games you found there was collectibles, intels? Yeah. Well, the intels are actually going to be used in this game, in Cold War, for something. They're not just a mindless collectible. You find intels and you read through the information that you've got and that will slowly drip feed you information on who the targets are for those side missions that unlock. So then eventually when you've got enough information, you think you know who are the right targets, 
you can either, using the Intel, decrypt a floppy disk, which has encrypted data on it, which will give you information that you need, or it will just flat out tell you who you need to go and, and take down. So, yeah, the side missions are there, and they are a strong part of the story, which are still optional, but you've got to play the game and get the collectibles and the intels to know what you should do in those side missions. But once you do them, I think that's it. I, I think you can't go back and change that, maybe. I'm not too sure. But I really like that aspect to it. I think they've, they've added something new without changing the whole game that I think people will appreciate, because I thought it was pretty cool. But then... The actual game itself, playing it through, it's your typical Call of Duty. Action sequence after action sequence, which is fun. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I put about an hour, hour and a half into it. Yep. Good game. Good game so far. It's ticking along well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'd, I've been meaning to, but yeah, like I, this is this is the first day I've been in here in, in my office since Thursday because it's been so freaking hot. So um, yeah. My computer yeah. hasn't been on for a few days. Yeah, well, and the, uh, the visuals are really good too. The the character models. Uh, what's the name of the yeah. president that's in that? What's his name? Ronald Reagan. It's Reagan. Reagan. He he looks pretty good, man. Like they've done yeah. really good with the 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 visuals. It looks great. Uh, Gretch, Thronebreaker. So this is a CD Projekt Red game, um, based in the Witcher. Um, that's world. right. Yes, you said the name of it earlier, and it rang a bell, but I couldn't remember what it was. But yes, yeah. now I know what it is. This is the asymmetric one? Isometric one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, so really interesting kind of game. So it's it's a card game slash wander around isometric view kind of thing. Yeah. So you, you play as Queen Meave, and you are... You come home to find bandits have ransacked your one of your towns and stolen all your, all the gold from your tax collectors. So pretty much have your your land's wealth tied up with these bandits. So you go on a on a quest to get them back with your armies, right? And so you sort of you wander around with Queen Meave on the on the map in the isometric view, and you collect bits and pieces that you need, collecting recruits, gold, wood, all the things you need, uh, and talking to people to pick up missions and stuff like that right then as you do missions or you get yourself into battles it switches to the card game and essentially you just play it eventually you'll be able to sort of customize your deck as you go and whatnot but as far as i've played it essentially gives you a deck and you play with the deck and essentially the idea is you just have to have the highest score by the time all the turns have ended and you yeah, so win the round it's gwent with extra steps yeah yeah so Look, I'm not a big fan of card games in this light. They're not really my jam. But I mm -hmm. found it simple enough to be able to play, just pick it up and sort of play it. Uh, and I find the, the walking around, it's, it's a very pretty game. Like, I, I looked at it and went, this is for what it is. This is quite a visually stunning game. And once Wait, again, is, I is mean, this on the Xbox, CD Projekt Red. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was out on Xbox. I thought it was a PC game, but there you go. Yeah, yeah so you can pick it up on Gay Pass for free um, and have a crack at it. It's, like I said, it's it's quite a charming little game. Uh, it Obviously, the way I, the, the level I was playing at is very basic. You could probably dig into it a lot deeper and, you know, you, like I said, customise your decks and go nuts if that's your, your, that your, th that's your thing. But, yeah, I, I think, like I said, it's quite a good-looking game. Like, once again, CD Projekt Red making a pretty game. That's part of the course, isn't it? So. Yeah, well, I, I played that before it was released. I remember I got sent a code from CD Projekt Red, and they mm. said that, uh, like, this was before we were allowed to do any content on it. There was no, like, there was, like, an embargo and all that sort of stuff. So I sort of just mm. played it and then did nothing with it, and mm. it wasn't really my kind of game. I didn't enjoy it. I could appreciate it for what it was, and I reckon a lot of people would like it, but it mm. wasn't something i would like uh and then yep. i don't know i just it just disappeared off my radar and i just hadn't thought about it since then but uh yeah, yeah there you go yeah no i'm i'm the same this is this is not really my jam uh, i'm surprised i played it as long as i did uh but i can appreciate why there'd be other people that would really love this game hmm. and yeah if you if you like if you like playing gwent this is like a more live action version of gwent so you know 
So, yeah. <laughs> There's some shit going on in the chat. Oh, my God. And Snoobs is just as you're involved, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. And that is bad. Oh, dear. Oh. You know, join the Discord if you want to see this disgusting rubbish. If you're uh, easily offended, uh, don't. Pro probably don't, not the best. Don't click the Discord link. <laughs> we'll, no. just, we'll just stay away from the live chat and random, mind you. Oh, and, and Radicus has just stepped it up. And <laughs> 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 That's bad. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Some people going to hell in this chat, all right? So be yeah. warned if you want to join. He's on the highway. Uh, last one from you, Luke, Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge uh, Catalyst. The game that doesn't exist. The game yep. that doesn't exist, I decided to give it a go because we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Well, you talked about Mirror's Edge and yeah, there was a comment made about how there should have been a sequel and we informed you that there is. Uh, however, I hadn't played it, so I went and gave it a go because it's uh, available on EA Play. And uh, I strangely got so addicted to this game, I actually really like it. It's a pretty cool game. I don't really know much about what's happening in the story because I've been playing it with the Wraith. Um, and if anybody knows uh, Wraithy, the, he just talks all the time. And uh, that's what we love about him, I guess. So I just really gave, uh, just gave up trying to listen to the story. So I just turned the volume down and we chatted while I was playing it. But that's... I guess that's testament to the gameplay, because even though I don't know what's going on in the game, and I'm not kidding, I've got absolutely no idea what is going on in the story, but I'm playing through it because I'm just enjoying the actual gameplay, because it's uh, it's a first-person runner, so you're, you're doing your, your parkour over like the, the tops of buildings and in through buildings, up ladders and all that sort of stuff, and you've got like a... Uh, a momentum gauge and when your momentum is up high that's kind of like your shield so when you're getting shot yep. at by the enemies if you've got high momentum then your shield will take the hit whereas if you stop dead and lose or if you trip or don't make a jump properly your shield disappears and that's when you start taking damage from the shots when you're getting shot at so it really does have an emphasis on uh, the parkour movement so the faster you're going, the safer you are. And it's actually good fun. And it flows really well. And it teaches you how to do it quite progressively and makes it seem simple, even though it looks very complicated. Uh, which is something that I didn't get when I played the first game. I felt like the first game just threw all of these abilities at you and it got confusing. Uh, but the... I think Catalyst has uh, improved upon that and made it a lot, lot uh, more user-friendly while still being quite complex. It's actually not too bad. Uh, I really enjoy it. I think it's a great game. And if anybody has um, played it, maybe they can explain what I'm doing. <laughs> what's yeah? Any, anyone know what's going on? That's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, I can't. Right? I can't imagine it is. It's going to be a very profound story. I'm guessing it's some sort of evil corporation that we're probably trying to bring down. And probably. as a runner, we get just sent on missions to go do X and Y to try and stop them from, I don't know, blowing up the planet. Who knows? But it's a, it's an interesting uh, visual sort of piece as well, where everything is very high contrast. There's bright whites and... Uh, Everything that you can sort of jump on is red, like bright red. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah that, uh, that's sort of how they did the first one, wasn't it? It was sort of like yeah, yeah. this um, yeah. contradicting tone yeah. that you could you could pick up on, yeah. Yeah, I like it. And it's very sort of futuristic as well, that kind of setting where all the buildings yeah. all look, you know, fancy and new and everything looks clean and the enemies are like some sort of paramilitary uh, organisation that... Uh, you know, they've got like all different varying space-aged weapons from tasery kind of things to clubs and actual laser guns and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It's a good game. I I, I recommend it to anyone that likes those runner-style games. It's good fun. Go on, let's go over to the news, shall we? Yes. I'm going to start it off with a bit of uh, bit of light-hearted news. <laughs> Fallout 76 has added wheelchairs. What? Uh, yeah. So, 
Uh, over on Twitter, Kelly, which is uh, at Kytel, K-Y-T-A-H-L, has reached out to um, reached out to Bethesda. Uh, they're in a in a wheelchair, and I say they're disabled in real life, and they wanted to add wheelchairs to Fallout 76, a game that they're playing quite a lot of. Uh, it's good to hear someone's getting some enjoyment out of it. So Bethesda have gone, you know what, we'll, um, we'll be the good guys here and, and throw in a craftable wheelchair that so you can you craft can, from your home base. You can use the wheelchair? Yep. To, like instead of walking around, you're wheelchairing around? Yes. I have... The very first thing that came to mind when I thought that was what you meant is that can you imagine the glitches that are going to be introduced into this game with a wheelchair? <laughs> These poor crippled people are going to be wheeling across the ground for the wheel to get stuck on something and then just go... <laughs> and just going to get launched into space. I was going to say wheelchair or crippled cannon. <laughs> wheelchair or fast travel mechanism? <laughs> I hadn't even thought of it like that, but yeah, I can see that happening. <laughs> oh my god, that's what, don't you want to escape reality though? Isn't that what video games are for? Oh, video games are for that, but some, something like this, when when a person wants to feel you know included, and especially a game like Fallout seventy six, it's you know it's very community based because. You either it's you know it's a contrasting game. You either really love it or you despise it, and unfortunately, the majority of the population are on the despising it. So the community is getting very tight knit from what I've been seeing. So if this person wants to, you know, feel as though she's uh, they're uh, represented, then but you, you know, on, you know what me. you know what's happened here though. What <laughs> the, they've. Uh, been waiting and waiting and waiting and finally their email system went Bloom! you have one fan mail yeah, one <laughs> and, positive. They've, and they've read it and gone hey hey George hey boss come over here come over have a look at this someone's playing and they want a wheelchair <laughs> what else are we doing uh, no. What's the people that are working on the bugs doing? Fuck all! Well, they could make a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put a wheelchair. Just get them to just get them to look at it. Should be right. How could they possibly say no to the only person playing the game? <laughs> hey, hey, George, George. Whatever you do, don't tell marketing because they want to charge us for it. And charge them for it. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, if that wheelchair does not like go super fast down hills, I'm. That's crap. <laughs> you got to be able to have, like, brake wear. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to uh, replace the brakes and stuff. But, yeah, that annoys me when you're on, like, a in, in a game like that, but it won't roll downhill. You take your finger off the yeah. controller or something and it just stops. It should You should be able to, like, just pick up massive speed downhills. That would be cool. Like, like Wolfenstein. Oh, it would have to be, like, a mad, beefy, like... Uh, End of world kind of wheelchair that can go over terrain, though. Yeah, could you imagine if you needed one of those nuclear reactors in the back of it to power it? Oh yeah, the the, the like like they do with the um the power the armor. armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah those, cool. those things four, that you four, find four, 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 that are fully charged yeah. and have been used in a in a generator for hundreds of thousands of years or whatever. Yet you put it in your power armor and it only lasts about forty five minutes. Yep. That's the one. Yeah, those just things. Like you. Do you, are you actually disabled? No, I just wanted a tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, nah, well, that's cool. But yeah, I reckon there will be a lot of bugs. It'll take a while before yeah. that's usable. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh Tonight my God. is not the night to be repeating the shit that's been put in the chat. <clears throat> not at all. Uh Luke, take it away with the 20-year dispute over spoons. Okay, I've got a article, like a excerpt from an article from Kotaku here. So, spoon-bending magician Yuri Geller gave Nintendo permission to use the character Kadabra on Pokemon cards today. 
That is after a 20-year legal dispute which Geller claimed the Pokemon's Japanese name and image were too close to his own. <laughs> he looks like Kadabra. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Sorry, i got to look this up. What's his name? Uh, Yuri Geller. Oh, Kadabra. Oh, no, I know what Kadabra looks like. <laughs> oh, okay. Yuri Geller. No, it, it doesn't look anything. It doesn't look like a Pokemon. It's stupid. Anyway, I go on. I am, This is what uh, Geller tweeted today. I am truly sorry for what I did 20 years ago. Kids and grown-ups, I am releasing the ban. It's now all up to Nintendo to bring my Kadabra Pokemon card back. It will probably be one of the rarest cards now. Much energy and love to all. How arrogant is that? My <laughs> Kadabra card. Listen, how many times in the history of life have fictional characters been inspired by real life people? For example, Mortal Kombat. We have Johnny Cage, who was originally based on Jean-Claude Van Damme. Van Damme has never received a cent in royalties because you know why? Because it's not fucking Van Damme. The person who made it was obviously a fan of Van Damme and wanted a similar like character in their game. But that doesn't mean that it's him. So anyway, because Kadabra, he generally, he holds spoons and he's like kind of magic. He's just put it, uh, just sued them and said, you can't use the card. Anyway, there's a little bit more here. As Screen Rant explains, while Kadabra is a word associated with magic, the Pokemon's Japanese name, variously written as Yungeru Yungella and Young Gela, which is like Yuri Gela, uh, seems to be a reference to Gela. Kadabra holds a spoon, a seeming seeming reference to Gela's most fam famous illusion. He He's the guy that bends spoons. It's his magic trick, yep. right? So Geller sued Nintendo over Kadabra in 2000, seeking damages and insisting the cards stop being used in sets. Nintendo turned... This is what he says. Yuri Geller. Nintendo turned me into a evil, occult Pokemon character. Nintendo stole my identity by using my name and my signature image. That should have been a compliment. Instead, he had a sook and sued them. and then, yeah, Probably because they said, they said no to money. Yeah, probably. But it, like the, that, a lot of famous people would class that and write it off as an honour. Pokemon is not just your passing phase. And it, was, it blew up immediately too. So it wasn't something that took five, ten years to take off. It was massive when it released. I know, and I'm a nobody, but I know I would be honoured if, if there was a Pokemon that was basically in my name and my image, and a lot of people would. But to take the piss like this bloke and have a sook because his name's Kadabra or his name is, what is it, Yungella uh, Jung, in, mm. in Japanese? Uh, and it, uh, what a dick. Anyway, if you want the... Yeah, Pokemon cards to be complete with a Kadabra. Maybe if Nintendo want to, they may re-release it. But uh, maybe they'll say, "No, go fuck yourself. We don't want your. Uh, we don't want to be associated with you anymore. Kadabra is dead." <laughs> yeah. Kadabra didn't survive the water trick and is now dead. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, he he didn't faint this time. He just fucking died. Yeah, look, I'm pretty sure that there is already a version of me in the Pokemon world. It's called Nuzlocke. Nuzlocke? I've never heard of it. Yeah. What's not never heard of that one? Nuzlocke. Is that, is that real? Am I... I don't know. This thing's... Oh, I don't know any of the Pokemons. <laughs> so I how just do you, How do you searched. spell it? This one comes up as N-U-Z-L-O-C-K-E, but I think it's Snorlax. I think that's who it's supposed to be. Uh, Big blue and white thing. Yeah, the big blue, white, chunky thing. That's Snorlax. That's Snorlax. Snorlax. What the hell is Nuzlocke? I don't know. It's called it's in the image I found. It says it's called Nuzlocke. Well, I'm look. I just googled Nuzlocke, and Google doesn't know. Like it's coming up with Nuzlocke things, but it's not coming up with a specific Pokemon. Yeah. Okay, that's Snorlax that you've just put into the well, there chat. There you go. Well, see, I don't know these things. Do you not know Pokemon? No, I, I, I do not like Pokemon. Oh, when Pokemon not... came out, you were 30. Yeah, I get it. My bad. <laughs> I was 16. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I was I was a little bit older, and yeah, I didn't have a piss drawer anymore. Um, <laughs> Nintendo World is opening. We've got an official date. Where is that? Nintendo World. So Super Nintendo World is in the Universal Studios Japan, which is in Osaka. It is opening on February the 4th, 2021. I want to go to Japan. Damn you, COVID. Yeah. I know a lot of people are wanting to go. I'm um, putting a link in the live chat uh, to, to show some details for it. Uh, so all the information's there, and it's opening up very soon. So what it's actually opening with, it's just a part of Universal Studios. It's a land that's all done up very much like the Mario games, and you can sort of play your own game as you run around. It, and, it, and it's, it looks like a Super Mario Brothers level. Yep. One of the biggest things is the what 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 people are sort of classifying as the flagship part of the um, part of this area, which is the Mario Kart ride. It's a roller coaster that uses AR technology. Oh wow! And so. It does that with um, yeah. So you've got to you've got to wear a augmented reality headset. So they're just glasses that's got like a cap on it that um, yeah looks like Mario's cap. Yeah, that's awesome. Which I thought was uh, I thought was pretty cool. But that's um yeah. So one of the big things that's coming out of it, obviously, in a post COVID world, they're looking to see how the um, the parks and really the um, the the industry as a whole is going to bounce back, uh, and especially people like Disney, who just announced this week they're looking at off, laying off like thirty five thousand people across their parks, mm. uh, just because of the down trip, downturn in you know sales and and whatnot. So hopefully this will be something that'll be a good kickstart to uh, people wanting to go well, over to Japan and experience this. Fingers crossed that the Japanese uh, and people nearby that do go visit go mental on this thing, and it's a super success because then there's mm-hmm. there's a prospect for it to be uh, made locally. You know, they may may make more uh, of these theme parks around the world because if they're popular, I could imagine this well, would go well in it's Sydney. A universal, it's the Universal Studios. It won't. It'll never come down to Australia. Um, Sydney's had too many failed. Um, parks. Uh, you just have to look at the the water rapid thing. That's up to its third owner now. Yeah, but that was in that's the short shit. Time. That is shit. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. And it's like you know, it's just Sydney's not well suited for it. You know, Queensland does all right with the parks up there because they've got. Oh, well, um, could, who movie. cares? Put, if it's in Australia, <laughs> on the eastern the eastern seaboard, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. I'll go to Queensland for it. That'd be great. Just don't put it in WA. I'm not going there. That's too far away. Oh, come on. <laughs> WA's beautiful. <laughs> and there's like Mardikins and Skrill going, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it doesn't go to SA, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's closer. So, and then, and then I can visit um, Radicus and I can stay at his house. The beach. So, yeah, go yeah. to South, South Australia. That'd be great. I'll crash on his couch. <laughs> Just yeah. rock up one day. Uh, hey, buddy. <laughs> like the Wraith. Like the Wraith says, we've got heaps of room at the back of Wero. <laughs> all the, all the, um, the, the, the Princess Peach would be knocked up for sure. Just, just tired uh, there on the campus, man. Everything there, else is. There, there is plans to uh, also expand to a Donkey Kong land as well. Nice. On, on top of this one. So once this one kicks off and goes, and if it gets well, uh, well received, then hopefully Donkey Kong will be coming next. If this was so, yeah. if this was near me, I would definitely go to this at least four times a year. Oh, <laughs> I, would, I would love it. You'd buy, you'd buy a, a 12-month membership just because you can go, you know what, oh, it's I'd Saturday. Pro- I've got I'd nothing probably, to do. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, I would. I would. This is totally up my alley. I could just spend time. I could just go there to hang out. Even if I've seen everything and done yeah. everything, I could just hang out there. I just love this. This is the, that's the same feeling. <laughs> this is my feeling. happy place. Yeah, it is. And that's how I felt with the EB Games Expo. I had um, days where I'd been there already the previous day, and I just felt good being there. 
Yeah, I didn't really. I'd seen everything. I didn't really have anything particular I wanted to do, but I was just happy to be there because it's you're mm. just surrounded by shit you love and you're interested in. Yeah, I would and love this. You're surrounded just, surrounded by people like at yeah. um at PAX last year. I sat over to the side for like an hour and a half or so, just soaking everything in, just watching and seeing what's going on and listening to the, you know, the different noises and whatnot that was there. It's just brilliant. Yeah. yeah, And 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 nobody, nobody is judging you for geeky, nerdy things because they're all into it. Yep. It's, yeah. Exactly. uh, I, I love the idea of this. That this, this whole, just even talking about it is, ex- is it's exciting. I love it. So yeah, we'll be keeping some eyes on that and seeing how it goes. Uh, Luke, PS Plus collection heist. Yes. So uh, there's a lot of people getting banned, <laughs> and some people are just so stupid and des- don't deserve nice things. But anyway. Uh... What? I I saw that it's exploded. I, I read something this afternoon that the uh, the ban list has exploded. Oh, no doubt. All right, so the story goes, this is from Kotaku. Links to all of my articles are in the uh, description. Uh, if you're one of the lucky ones that have been able to buy a PS5 already, you'll know that with a PlayStation Plus subscription, you also get access to the PS Plus collection, where it's 20 like of the really good PS4 games will be added to your account. But if you're still on PS4, that bundle's not available to you. Uh, But it didn't take very long for people to figure figure out that if you logged into a PS5 with your PS4 details, it'd trigger the lot into your account. So it, it basically will add all 20 of those games to your account, make them unlocked, and you can play them on your PS4. Now, uh, the reports are saying that this quickly led to a lot of little shits on PS5 selling the opportunity on auction sites like uh, eBay and such. Uh, uh, Selling the opportunity to have your credentials logged in on on the PS4 that they own, then leading to you getting all of these games that you shouldn't really have access to because it's for PS4, PS5 owners. But now it seems that Sony have swooped in and swing the shit out of their ban hammer. So I don't actually know if they're perma-banning people for this or if they're... Because I know that some people are being banned for a couple of months, which locks mm-hmm. them out completely until next year, even over the Christmas break and all that sort of stuff sucked in. Uh, but yeah, look, that, that's the thing. that A lot of people in this world will, if given an inch, will take a mile. Now, I think this is very stupid on Sony's behalf. It probably should have been a one-use code in the box. Uh, Why you would make it so whoever logs into that account gets them added to their account, I think was just asking for an exploit. But the thing is, people take this shit too far. Because what I said to you yesterday, Snoog, is I like... When you get your PS5, I'm going to log in on your console and get all these games. Arguably, I think I probably own all 20 You've of those. You've already got them all. <laughs> I, I probably yeah. do. There might be maybe one, maybe two, if I'm lucky. But I thought, oh, that'd be a good idea. I'll just log in on your console. But then you get these dickheads that are actually charging people $10, $20 to, to log in on their behalf to get them these games. Although very stupid to hand over your login details to a stranger, it's it's dumb because you're putting this on a public forum that people hear about. It blows up. It gets popular. Sony, it gets back to Sony. They get wind of it. You get in trouble. It's obviously going to be in their terms and conditions. Although it's a stupid way of uh, handing out these games, I'm sure they have thought about uh, consequences of people who do exploit it. But uh, that then leaves me thinking, what about people that are legitimately logging in on other people's consoles? So say, for example, Pat, you get your new PS5, Mm. right? You've logged Mm. in, you get your 20 games, and you go, hey, Luke, come over. Let's play some, like, come try out the PS5. We'll play some multiplayer stuff. So we're going to play Mortal Kombat. But I want my characters, I want all of the progress that we play together to, to account for me. So I log in. I've got to log in to my account. 
and you can log into two accounts. Player one is you, it's your account, and player two is me. You have to have an account, yep. right? Or you can have a guest. But I want the yep. pro progress. So I log in. Am I doing the wrong thing? No. No. I but, I would dare say that there'd be a couple of things in there and, and it'd be something with the usage data that you send back to, you know, that the, the console automatically sends back to, to Sony. There'd be, there'd be something along there where they're picking up, you know, why has this person got 25 accounts that he's just put in this afternoon yeah. and only logged into once? Yeah, well, that, that, that's probably yeah. the difference. But, yeah, I don't know, however they work it out. But I would imagine if you did that with a mate and your mate did it for, like, five mates, I would imagine there's probably no issue. But, yeah, like you said, no. <laughs> there's 20, 30, 40, 50 hundreds. You're probably going to get banned. Yeah, I'd say so. And and plus, let, let's all admit, you know, some of these people aren't the smartest, so they've probably got their online username as, as what they're, you know, it's probably in their listing uh, of what they're selling on, so. Well, yeah, and they're probably... So you've just got to look at it and go, oh, look at that, you're a, you know, oh, your email address is attached to your Sony file as well. Oh, banned. Yeah, no. stupid, but anyway, like I said... In all people... honesty, they're lucky they did break the console because... Isn't that what um, Xbox did that to a, to someone who who breached the embargo? Who, yep, yes. who breached the embargo? Yeah, yeah. They breached, and they, they their have console. the Sony and Microsoft both have the ability to render your console dead, and it doesn't mean yeah. it's dead for you. It means it's dead. So if you sell it, nobody else can use it. It's not your no, account. Just... They can kill your console if yeah. you do something you know bad enough to warrant that. So just be real careful with, with what you do. Um, but I would imagine that people with, you know, some sort of sense, they're not really going to be doing that sort of shit. I think this would just be idiots that are just out for a quick buck. They're grubs anyway. They, Who knows? It's probably one of the idiots that are um, using bots to buy them. Who knows? Mm. No sympathy from me. None at all. All right. PS Plus and Games with Gold. They came Ooh. out... Uh, recently this last week uh again i they're, they're okay uh well to be honest with you you know at this this time of the year we've got that much stuff going around and you've got a plethora of games anyway so it's just a little bit of extra worms rumble and just cause four on the ps4 and then rocket arena is on the ps5 of course all three can be used on the five they're good uh, worms rumble is some i've been really wanting yeah i want that because that's a real-time Worms game. It's not turn-based. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Just Cause keep... 4, I feel like that was already done somewhere. Yeah, might it have, was. Might have been a Games with Gold or something. Yeah, but, I think um, so. I, haven't, I, I think I installed it, but I never actually played it. So You know, strangely um, enough, Just Cause 3 is better. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Does it run any better? Yes. It runs better. <laughs> the visuals are better. I don't know. What do you? Yeah. Uh, did I miss something? Does it run better? No. Um, from I, I can't remember if it was three or four that I played, but it was just absolutely shocking. Like playing the first area. Oh, it probably was on your old PC. No, I wasn't playing it on PC. It was on one of the consoles. Oh well, no, no it doesn't run better then. If you're talking about console. <laughs> oh yes, no, uh, yeah, Just Cause Three. I played that on the PS3, and it was shit because the frame drops were so bad. Yeah, like to the point where it's stuck. Yes, yes. No, I remember what you're talking about. There was a particular area yeah. that I played which made me turn it off because it was crap. No, but right now I'm talking about PC. <laughs> it runs oh, fine okay. on PC. Cool. All right. Uh, there you go. It was free on Epic Games. That's that's where I've got it. So cool. I'll load it on the PC and have a look. Uh, over on Games with Go. Oh, sorry, Rocket Arena too. Uh, yeah. This is the. I, I believe this is the new one. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's um, the game that's like Rocket League, but you can get out of the car or something, run around, shoot shit an, on foot. An action, an action. No, I don't think it is. What's it called? No, it's not. Rocket it's called Arena. Rocket Arena. An action fueled. What's it say here? No, I don't know. An oh no, that's not the game on. Three I'm versus of. three. It's an EA game. I think the one you're thinking of is a Ubisoft game. This is an EA game. Um, yeah, I, I don't so, know the name of the one I'm thinking of, but no, that's not what I was thinking of. That's very different. I don't know what it is. It kind Do of you know looks... much about it, Greg? No, I have no idea what that is. No. It kind of looks it's like um, 
like a Fortnite kind of game. Yeah. Yeah, it's just another... It's a 3v3 battle arena game. Look, it's... So it'll, mm. it, it's I think it's got the same sort of same sort of feel as Rocket League. Oh, it's it's third person three shooter. Three. I wonder if I can play that. It's um, it's part of EA Play, but I don't. Oh, oh what? Hang on, six ninety five on Steam, and yes, it's part of EA Play. I can actually play that. All right, right. Well, well, I'll give it a go, it like. and I'll tell you all about it next time if it. Because uh, I'm still nine days away. Nine days away from what? My PlayStation 5. Oh, all right. You'll enjoy that in about three weeks then. Probably, yes. <laughs> um, I, I must admit, there's, there's all these people that have been getting their, you know, mid-December releases early, and I've been waiting for my phone call or for my message to say, hey, it's in stock, but it hasn't come yet. Look, I, I don't... So. I, well, maybe a little bit I do, but I don't really want to burst your bubble. But what exactly are you fucking exciting, excited about? <laughs> what? Because I have never been able to purchase a brand new console at the start of the generation. Never. I, I've never been an early adopter. I'm in a position now where I can, and it's just the fact that it's new. Okay. It's new, it's shiny, it's more powerful. I get to hook it up to my TV and just experience something new. And that's that's it. You are going to have so much fun with that user interface. Probably, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to play. There's plenty to play. Oh, you can play Spider-Man, I suppose. I can play Spider-Man. I've got Demon Souls, Bug Snacks. You are not uh, going to play S S Demon Souls. You are going to break... I am. You're going to break that expensive controller playing Demon <laughs> Souls. No, you're not. That's why I'm getting a second one. Okay. <laughs> But I am going to try it. I, I am going to try it. Uh, try it. You um, need to stream how, that. How long, Luke? How long, Luke? You reckon an hour? Oh, you reckon it'll last an hour. He'll, he'll, more. he'll, he'll put an hour into it. I reckon you put an hour. Yeah. Because an hour is kind of the bell curve where it's like, it's like all right, I'm not going to hold your hand anymore. <laughs> it's like, no, Dark, dark Souls, uh, from, from, what I, what I from what I've seen, it's uh, De Demon Souls just throws you straight in, like in no, a no, tutorial. No, I, I, I get, I get that. There's no tutorial, but like even no, in no, most there, games, there is a tutorial. Like... But the tutorial, the boss that you've got to try and beat at the end of the tutorial, will actually um, kill you in two hits. Uh, even though Snoogs, you know a little bit about the game. <laughs> I really don't think you know what you're getting into. I really, oh, I don't. You, you have to stream that. Because I, I you, will stream it. you are going to get the shits. Um, you are like, I'm, for your sake, I'm glad you didn't buy the game. Um, it's a, a, a re review copy. But, it's a review. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you you are going to snap it at that game. I, I don't. I don't want to watch the stream. I want to be there when you're playing it. You want to feel the Come heat on. radiating off his face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, oh, need, that needs to be streamed. Thank you so much for the thank you so much for the lifting up. It's oh yeah, brilliant. no, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. That's what we're here for. Uh. <laughs> we're just realistic, mate. We're realistic. No, I'm, I'm I'm well aware. I know that I'll rage at it, but I still want to give it a crack. Yeah, I'm not. I uh, refuse to play the game. I'm not playing it. Yeah, no. See, the thing is, too, is I've got Sackboy. I reckon I'll rage at Sackboy more. Oh uh, yeah, you will. Yeah. <laughs> Because you'll persevere with Sackboy more. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. I just had a vis right. I just had a mental image of an actual Sackboy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> anyway. Race uh, remove the googly eyes from his, his reach. What have we uh what have we got? Games with gold. Ah yes. Uh I know one of these games. Uh, so, Games with Gold, we've got The Raven Remastered, Bleed 2, Saints Row, I believe it's Get Out of Hell. Uh, and DLC. Uh, yeah, it's stacking. Oh, stacking? Again? What? Yeah. I think we got that so, already. Sa Saints Row and stacking are from the, the 360. The Raven Remastered and Bleed 2 are from the Xbox One. Yeah, right. I know stacking and I know uh, Saints Row. Saints. Yeah, I don't know what The Raven is or Bleed. Yeah, so, I don't know. Anyway. Bridge, any anything from your end? Uh, no. I can tell you no. more about um, 
What was the uh, Nuzlocke? Oh, right. I can oh. actually explain to you what it is now. Yeah, what's that? All right, so what Nuzlocke is, is it's a particular set of rules to play Pokemon by which increase the difficulty of playing Pokemon. Ah, uh, so Nuzlocke's it's, it's a challenge. not a Pokemon. It's a... Yeah, it's a challenge. Rule set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And Please. it includes, like, considering Pokemon that faint, like, dead, so you can't use them. Uh, you can only collect one Pokemon from each area, and it has to be the the first wild Pokemon you encounter, and then you have to, like, you're not allowed to collect any more Pokemon after that. It's it's inc- it's hardcore. Pokemon hardcore mode. It's it's ridiculous. Hardcore Pokemon. Yep. Right. Oh, well, and and one of the other things is you're not allowed to reset your playthrough, otherwise the rules just don't mean anything. So you've got to play through it no matter how badly you go. It's it's quite brutal. This is like Souls for Pokemon players. And you thought it was a Pokemon, Pat? <laughs> it sounds like a Pokemon name. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'll give you that. Oh, yeah, some weird shit that just comes up in that bloody world. Uh, I believe that's it for the news, boys. Yeah. Unless I've missed anything. No, I think I think so. I think so. It's all good. All right. Over to last words before we close up the show for another week. Shout out to our live listeners in the last little bit. Our live listeners have exploded. We have A10, Azrael, Kazakyle, Radicus, The Wraith, and Tris Megistos. I must have said Kazakyle three times. <laughs> 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 and then he appeared. Yeah. <laughs> Kazakyle three times while looking in the mirror. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to make a joke with that. <laughs> and the gifts are going. That's that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh, flowery baps floating around. Mm. A lot of boobage. Uh, last words. <coughs> Look, you had some weird ass last words. Me somewhere. There you. Uh, I've got yeah, my. I got my. Uh, I got a couple of things that I, I wanted to bring up. Uh, but did you know that 2013 was the first year since 1987 to feature four different numbers? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, because okay. two zero one three. Yeah. Because right. before that there was two twos. Because 2012. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I thought everyone That's... would want to know about that. That's that's one of those that's pub trivia right there. That's right. Yeah. So mm. you, you can. And that's really me. why you guys sign on to listen to this. Yeah. It's you can thank me when you're taking home that meat little tray. Nuggets of gold. Yeah. But anyway, I do have another one, another little bit of last words here that I wanted to bring up. And this is uh, thanks thanks to the Wraithy uh, for sort of sparking this one. He sent. He, I sent or we'll put a link in one of the Discord channels there about. Uh, some YouTube channel pwned something. Totally no. What was it called? I didn't write that oh, down. Oh, this was the Community Conquer one. Pure po- pure ownage is how you say it, but it's with a P. Pure ponage yeah. or whatever. Uh, which prompted me to go. I thought, you know what? I know that word, P W N, like as owned. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna look up. Well, how did this come about? Like this, this because this has been a very long time a gaming thing, where it was always sort of written as pwned pwned or whatever uh, so i thought mm-hmm. i'd look it up unfortunately there are about a million different old wives tales as to where this came from uh <laughs> this this term in the gaming world however the most likely i would like to say and the one that i found the most was that it was a typo in world of warcraft where when you got were killed instead of it saying you were owned by such and such. It was a typo because O and P on the keyboard are right next to each other. Um, So the developers accidentally wrote PWNED. So in World of Warcraft, uh, it was what popped up in the kill feed or something like that. I think that's the most likely, but like I said, there was a whole bunch of different stories that I read, so it may or may not be the case. But that kind of sounds the most likely. Yeah. yeah like, we have a lot that, of our gaming lore thanks to Warcraft, so, you know. Yeah. I mean, it it seemed, like, fair. Like, the O and the P 
is a very easy typo because they are right next to each other when trying to write write the word owned. Um, and yeah, like World of Warcraft is an old game; it's been around for a long time, so it may well have been the origin. And I'm happy to believe that as canon, but who knows? Nice. Was that interesting? I found that interesting. Because you I, guys, have, I did actually. Yeah. You, you guys have heard of pwned or you know, whatever, yeah. however you say it. Yeah, and I just thought, you know what? I've never actually looked into where the hell that came from, but now we know. See, that that just sort of highlights as well the the type of players. On you know, on one side, you've got people starting this you know pwned sort of meme movement word, and then on the other side, you've got Call of Duty players, which is I fucked your mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there is a very contrasting uh, split where there's gamers. Mm. And there are gamers that where will we'll have fun with whatever happens during their gaming sessions. And then there are gamers that will just try to hurt people. And, you know, it's, it's pretty clear which one I prefer. I can't stand yeah. the toxic uh, environments that some, some games have. And, you know, sadly... It's killed a lot of the uh, meeting of new people online because uh, I mute everyone now and just chat with you guys, with friends. Mm. So it's, it's a shame. And I figured out why I couldn't chat to Radicus and Cod the other night. Oh, hey, what was that? Uh, game chat, party chat. Oh, yes, you can select it. You would <clears> have <throat> had game chat probably. I did. Yeah, okay. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, that's all good. Uh, Greg, any last words from you? Just my usual ones. Be good to each other. Sounds good to me. Nothing from me. So we're going to bugger off. Aussie Gamers TV and Snooker Vision. Don't forget to come and say good day over on Twitch. And of course, Reggio XBL on the Instas. Now, uh, we done, boys? Close it up? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Let's go. Thank you very much to everyone that's listened to the show, and especially those that are still listening this far along. Don't forget to continue any of the topics that we have discussed in the show over on our Discord channel or hit us up via our socials. While you're at it, hit up the website, www.thexp.com, that Luke has so lovely fixed up, <laughs> and I nearly destroyed again this afternoon. Links, as always, are in the podcast show notes and descriptions. That's all from me. As always, I have been Snooks. I have been Lucas. And I have been Reggio. See you. Bye-bye, Ooh. dude. Ooh, once again, we have reached the end of another week in gaming. And if you've listened all the way up until this point of the show, then there's a good chance that you're a perfect fit for the AGXP Discord channel. And you can join by using the links in the show description. Once you've joined, you will find yourself within a community of amazing people who are all interested in one thing and that's gaming. You can also join in live while we record the show and have your say. Now don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you'll be notified when the next episode is available for your listening pleasure. Until next time, take care, be safe and keep on gaming.